Lesson 15, Powers and Roots. So when we are multiplying, when we have repeated multiplication, we can use exponents by telling how many times that we're repeating. So the five in this case would be considered or is called the base, and the three we call the exponent. We just write a little one up to the above the five. The exponent means repeated multiplication. So, for example, if we had a problem that told us to use exponents, so we have 2 times x times x times y times z times y times y. So we would write our 2 in the front. We would count up the x's. How many times do we want to repeat it is 2x squared. And then y, there's three of them, so we put y cubed times z. So the opposite of raising a number to a power, and sometimes we call that the inverse of raising a number to a power, is taking the root. So if we raise it to a two, so this x squared right here, if you are squaring a number, the inverse would be taking the square root. If we raised it to the third power, the inverse would be taking the cubed root. So it's just the root, um, the index on the root would just be the number that the exponent is. The square root sign just looks like this. I know you guys have seen it before as we've done it in um, power-ups. Sometimes we call that the radical sign. So when we have, say, the square root of 49, we try to think of a number that is repeated multiplication, so it's, it's multiplied by itself to get 49. So that number is 7. If I had the cubed root of 8, so that little 3 right here is called the index, we're trying to find one number that's repeated 3 times multiplied that will get 8. So if we were to look at the prime factorization of 8, we have 2 times 2 times 2, and we want the cubed root, so we're looking for a group of 3. Because there's 3 of there, those there, we can just say the cubed root of 8 is 2. So we're looking for that one number that multiplies by itself three times to get eight. So we're going to write some vocab here. This little three right here on the root symbol is called the index. The 27, or the number that's underneath the radical sign, is called the radicand. And then the sign itself is called the radical. If you see the radical symbol with no number written, so right here there's no number, then in that case we know that the index is 2. So it's just the square root and we don't put a number there for the index. Um, we have a sequence of perfect squares that you guys will see so many times in this book. So you need to know this sequence. And it's basically 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. So it's 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, and so on and so forth. Um, they're called perfect squares because if you think about a square, if the side length is 1, the area would be 1 times 1. 
If you had a square and the side lengths were 2, the area would be 2 times 2. And if you had a square that had side lengths of 3, the area would be 3 times 3. And that's the end of the lesson.